Okay, find your place and let's go. In the Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, you can stand or sit if you're tired of standing. Just go ahead and sit down. And uh, This is Matthew chapter 7 and uh, verse number 13 and 14. Sure good to see Joyce here today. Miss Jane's daughter, that's a blessing. Okay, uh, Matthew 7, 13. Matthew 7, 13. Matthew 7, 13. Well, everybody stand. Since half of them stand and half of them not, we'll just have everybody stand. We'll work you over like you do in the Jewish synagogue, up and down, up and down. You know, you get your exercise in the Jewish synagogue. If you've never been, you ought to go sometime. A lot of them have their meetings on Friday night, and uh, I'm not sure what to do here in Gastonia. The Bible said in the book of Matthew, chapter number 7 and verse 13, Enter ye at the straight gate. Man, what about that? He's telling you what gate to enter into. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Wow. Because straight is the gate and there is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Let's pray. Father, it's a blessing to be here today. Thank you for the good word of God. I pray that you'd help us to give forth thy word today. Speak to your people, encourage and strengthen and convict. Do whatever needs to be done in the hearts and lives of every man, every boy, every girl. Be glorified, be lifted up, be exalted, and just meet with us in a mighty way. We'll praise you, we'll thank you, we'll give you the glory. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to speak to you today upon this thought, the road to destruction, the road to destruction. In the way of introduction, I want to take you back to the book of Matthew chapter 6 and uh, give you some of the twos that you find in these two chapters. There's two kind of alms. Did you know that? Two kind of alms. The Bible says you can give alms to be seen of men or you can give alms to glorify the Lord. You can uh, pray two kind of prayers. You can pray prayers to be heard of men or you can pray prayers to be heard of God. There's two kinds of fast. You can fast to be seen of others. You know, the old Pharisees that get up there and they want everybody to know, look here, I'm a fasting. Well, you can fast in your closet or... Not to be seen of men, but to be seen of God Almighty. That's the kind of fast that God honors. That's the kind of praying that God honors. That's the kind of alms that God honors. There's two kind of treasures the Bible talks about. There's earthly treasures and then there's heavenly treasures. The Bible said, don't lay your treasure up down here, but lay them up over yonder. Don't worry about your treasure down here. Lay them up over yonder because the Bible said, you know, thieves can break through and steal down here and all kind of things and rust and, you know, corruption can take away treasures and things like that. The Bible said there's two kind of masters. He said um, there's two kind of masters. He said you can hate the one and love the other. You can hate the one. You can't love two masters at the same time. You can hold the one or despise the other. No man can serve God and mammon. You can't serve God in money. You can't serve God in the devil at the same time. You either got to drink from the fountain of living water. You got to drink from a fountain that's corrupt water. There's two kind of builders, the Bible says, two kind of builders. There's a wise man and a foolish man. What kind of builder are you today? Everybody's building. Everybody in this building is a builder. Every soul is a builder. You're building your life uh, either one of the two ways. You're a, a foolish person or you're a wise person. The wise man is the man who accepts the Lord Jesus and follows him. There's two kind of foundations, the Bible says. You can build on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. He's the rock of ages. And if you build on him, you'll never go down. My brother-in-law used to sing that song, I've never seen the one that God of children go down. You never will either because if they're founded upon the rock of ages, they'll never, no, never, no, never go down. And so uh, the foundation of the rock, that's what you want to be on. Then some build on the sand, that sand of religion, that sand of good works, that sand of self-righteousness. It will not do. When you stand before God, you can tell him all the good things you've ever done. He said, that won't do. It's the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanses from all sin. Your good works will never justify you. Your good works will never cleanse your sins. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ. Baptism will not wash away your sins. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ. A church membership will not wash away your sins. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ. Every good thing you can do, brother, will not be accepted in the sight of God except in Christ. There's two kind of results, the Bible says. One stood and the other fell. One house, they built a house. One built it on the, the sand, the other built it on the rock. And they all, you know, the storms come. The storm comes just like to everyone. You have storms, I have storms. We have, uh, the wind blows in our life and trouble comes and all that. And so one stood, it was built upon the rock of ages, it stood. Then the Bible said one fell. 
the one upon the sand. If you ever went down to the beach and you stand there with a, your foot on the, on the sand and you build your foot up in the sand, I've done this before. I'm not a beach goer. I'm not a, a swimmer in the ocean. I've only been in the ocean one time. That's all I took to get satisfy me because I don't like to be thrown around like that. I like to swim in the river. Where it's, but I've put, you know, dug my foot up a little sand like that, and here comes the water. And after a while, it just takes all the sand away. Well, the Bible said that man who built upon the sand, his, his house fell. And so that's the way it is. And great was the fall of it. He lost it all. That's the way it is. A lot of folks are going to come to the end of their life. They're going to lose it all. Lose it all. Lose it all. All the things they've counted on in this life, it'll be gone. Hey, hey, make sure you're upon the rock of ages. The Bible said there's two gates. The Bible talks about a straight gate. That means a little small gate, a narrow gate. The Bible said uh, there's a broad gate. There's a wide gate, and then there's a narrow gate, a very straight gate. The Bible said there's two ways. There's a narrow way and a broad way. The Bible said the narrow way leads to life, and few there be that find it. Only a few is going to heaven in comparison. I heard Dr. David Jeremiah this morning. He said they figure there may be, have been 108 billion people that's lived upon planet Earth. I don't know. I don't know that they know. That's just a, a guess, I guess, and maybe I'm figuring about the different uh, ages and people. I don't know how many has been here. Only God knows, but 108 billion people. Just imagine, only a few of that are going to be in heaven. That's amazing, isn't it? And, of course, the Bible said it leads to life, to life. And so it's a wonderful road to be on. The Bible talks about a broad road. As the Bible said, many there be that go in thereat. Many go in thereat. And the Bible said it leads to destruction. It leads down. And so, beloved, hey, you want to be on that rock. You want to be on that narrow path. You want to be serving the Lord Jesus because that's the only way that you'll enjoy the afterlife. Then I want to say, first of all, notice, I'm talking about the road to destruction. You know, internationally speaking, the world is on the road to destruction. The world at large is on the road to destruction. That's all kind of religions in the world, all kind of religions, and they leave Jesus out. If they leave Jesus out, they're on that road of destruction. They're headed down, 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 down on that road of destruction. And, of course, that we, we live in a dark world. There's worlds out there that people have not the knowledge of Jesus. They don't have the knowledge of the Word of God. When you hear people talk, you know they don't have any knowledge of the Word of God. When you read the Bible, you know what the Bible says, right? And you listen to these folks, and they're talking, and, and you know they know nothing about the Word of God. They're in darkness, and so the world at large is in darkness today. Then I want to say, number two, nationally speaking, America is on the road to destruction. America is on the road to destruction. Do you get that? The Bible's in the book of Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. They said one time France done away with a Sabbath worship and those things and even tied a Bible to a mule's tail and uh, drove it down the street, put a naked woman on that mule and they piled up all the Bibles and burned them. One day a fella got up in uh, the general assembly, I guess it was, and said, we need to put God back in France. That's what America needs to do is put God back in this country, yes, sir. The Bible goes on to say in the book of Psalms, verse number 16, there is no king save the multitude of a host. There's no country saved by a multitude of a host. I don't care how big army you got. It is not saved by a multitude of a host. The Bible said a mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is vain, a thing for safety. Hey, they used horses back in them days. We got planes and tanks. You think that's going to uh, provide safety and security for America? No, no, brother. We don't put our trust in those things, but I know they do. Oh, the church don't but put their trust in that. Neither shall he deliver by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. It, that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death. Hey, those that got their eyes upon the Lord, they fear him. God will deliver them, the Bible said, from death. And to keep them alive in famine. Hey, hey, brother, just keep those words in your mind. This is what the Bible said in Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness exalts the nation, but sin is reproach to any people. Righteousness will exalt you. It will exalt you. It will exalt a nation. It will exalt a church. It will exalt an individual. Uh, righteousness will exalt you, I'm telling you, but sin will bring reproach upon you. Sin will reproach a nation. And that's exactly what's happened in America. It's shamed America. Brother Chuck is talking about being in service with all over the world. And the world hates us. They think we're evil. You know why? Because so much evil is taking place in our day. 
and they've turned away from the Lord. Oh, it's sad, isn't it? And so righteousness will exalt you, but sin will shame you and disgrace you. One day when you stand before God, if you don't repent and get right with God, you'll be standing there in disgrace before the Almighty God. You'll have to drop your head and say, Oh, God, why did I live in sin like that? So there's a righteousness versus sin, righteousness versus sin. I'll take righteousness any day. Give me righteousness. Give me righteousness. Hey, take sin. Take it all away. Take it away. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah again, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord that, that, that uh, exercises loving kindness and judgment and righteousness in the earth. In these things do I delight, saith the Lord. Hey, our leaders need to read that verse, don't they? They need to read those verses. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 11. Hath a nation changed their gods which are no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which is, doth not profit? Hey, brother, haven't we changed our gods in America? Hadn't America changed her God? Sure she has. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. Why? Because the judgment of God is upon a nation that changes their God. For my people have committed two evils. Two evils, he says. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. They've forsaken the Lord. Isn't that what our country has done? Hadn't our country at large, hadn't our leaders forsaken God? I'm telling you, they have forsaken God, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. They think they've got something going, but brother, what they've got will not hold water. Oh, me, oh, my. And you know why I say that America is on the road to destruction? Because she has forsaken the Lord. She's turned her back on God. She's hewed her out cisterns that hold no water. Hey, 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 I wish somebody could wake up. I wish somebody could see. You see, a country goes by the way of the leaders. It was the leaders stood there and said, away with this man. Let his blood be on us and on our children. And for 2,000 years, brother, the blood of Jesus Christ has been upon the Jewish nation. They haven't recognized that, but you know God will forgive them. They'd come and confess their sins, and they'll recognize Jesus as the Messiah and say, we crucified him. The Lord Jesus Christ would forgive them and wash them. And one day they will be that to that place to say, we crucified our Messiah. And so I, I look what the Supreme Court has done. I almost could call them the deceived court. Because I think that's exactly what they've been deceived, don't you? They've been deceived about righteousness and about sin. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is reproached to any people. All you got to do is look and see what has happened since they've taken God out of everything. Brother, it's went down, 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 down. They took prayer out of their schools, took the Bible out of their schools, took the commandments out of their schools, and now the courthouse is anywhere it was up. The Ten Commandments was out. And I told a fellow, we met him down to saw the Lord on Thursday night, and I was telling him what I said. I said, you know, I said, if there's any printers out there, they ought to start printing the Ten Commandments. He said, wait a minute, I got something I want to give you. Reach back, got a big old packet about this big, and he pulled out, and there it was, the Ten Commandments. They're printing them down there. He said, we print them for a quarter apiece, so we ought to order about 10,000 of them. Amen. <laughs> but anyway, hey, every business ought to have one. Every home ought to have one. Every place, the government won't let you put them in the schools. They won't let you put them in the courthouse. Put them everywhere else. Hey, righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is reproached to any people. They've taken everything out of God out of the government. we got a godless government. You know that? The ACLU is suing every, everything that's God. They're suing about taking God off our money and God we trust, taking everything like that out. This crowd is against religion. They're trying to do everything they can to stamp out religion, stamp out Jesus. They don't want you to pray in the name of Jesus. Why does the courts give in to these devils? That's not the way this country was founded. They know it if they know anything. If they don't know how this country is founded, we need, to, we need to get them out of office and send them back to first grade and say, start all over. You say amen that or me? If you believe that, say amen. Every time somebody prays in Jesus' name, they have a fit. Hey, the old, hey that's sad, that's sad. You know, just like the Supreme Court okayed this, a same-sex marriage, and that's bad enough. That's madness, madness, madness. I'm telling you, that's madness. 
That's certainly contrary to the word of God. God said it's an abomination to me. God said it's hateful in my sight. God said it's a sin in my sight. And when you condone sin, brother, you're just as guilty as anybody else. You can't, you can't condone sin. I don't care if it's in your kids, if it's your mama, if it's your daddy, if it's in you, you can't condone it. You have to say it's sin. Yes, sirree. And so, hey, brother, it's a sad day, brother. You know, right after they did that, they passed a law that you didn't have to show your identification to vote. Well, that's madness too, isn't it? Now, uh, you know, I had to show my license to get in to see Kenny's brother over at the hospital. Ain't that something? I wanted to see Brother Ronnie. And uh, they said, Let, let's see your driving license. I had to show my identification just to get in to visit somebody. But don't you think voting's pretty important? I think that's real important for our country, don't you? Absolutely, brother, I'm telling you. Hey, brother, it's a sad day. It's a sad day, isn't it? And uh, why do you reckon they did that? Wonder why they did that. Do you reckon that they might want to be a little crooked? You think they might want to be a little deceiving? You think they might want to vote illegal immigrants? You think they might want to vote folks that's in the graveyard? I think maybe that might be it, don't you? You think that's honest? You think that's righteousness? Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. Sin is a reproach to any people. Hey, brother, we need to get on the right side of righteousness, don't we? Yes, sirree. It's a sad day. But the ball has not stopped rolling. Do you know that? It's not, well, it didn't stop the other day with that. It keep, I wish I had a ball up here. I never thought about getting a ball. If I've got one in my study, I might have thought I'd brought it. The ball keeps rolling, folks. It keeps rolling. You know what they did? I heard this week. They voted to, said the Boy Scouts voted to let gays be scoutmasters. Bless it be God, I wouldn't put one of my boys in there. You crazy as a bed bug if you think I'd let my kids sit under one of them dudes. Now they got to live. I know they got to live, but brother, they don't have influence on kids. They want to live like the devil, help themselves. But I, want them, I don't want them teaching my kids to live like the devil. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin will bring you down. Sin will bring you down. My soul. Then there's that Planned Parenthood, you know, sitting in body parts, them little aborted babies. America's still going down, folks. Killing all them little unborn babies. You think God's not seeing all that blood? You, you think God's up in heaven? He's just twiddling his finger and he ain't paying no attention to what's going on? You better believe he's not, brother. You better believe he's not. I mean, all the things they're doing, you know, the ACLU and this crowd that's against religion, you know, they're trying to get, uh, you know, the in God we trust out and under God out of the pledge of allegiance to the flag and all that. I believe a judgment has already started on America. We're on the road to destruction, I'm telling you. Leads to destruction. This country is on that road, folks. It's on that road. All you got to do is listen to the news a little bit. They probably want to cover some of it up, but you know, there's three states are on fire out yonder. Three states are on fire. One fellow said he'd never seen flames so high in his life. Wait till they get to hell. They'll see some high flames, won't they? Wait to get the lake of fire. There's going to be some high flames there, I'm telling you right now. And uh, I, I tried to get on the computer there. I can't get around on the computer. It gets me so mad I want to throw it out the window. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I was trying to, you know, find out a little bit, and I saw on there where this fireman got burned up. He just went out there to check out the thing. He got burned up. I don't know how many houses have been burned up since. You know, hey, God's judgment is against the nation. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is reproach to any people. Sin shames a nation. Sin brings a nation down. You see, God can't wait and judge a nation at the judgment because it's individual judgment. He has to send tragedy. He has to send troubles. He has to send all these disasters to judge a nation. Maybe to get the attention. That's what he did to Israel. He sent a draft to get their attention. You know, Elijah prayed when he saw all the sin and wickedness of Israel. You know what he did? He prayed that God would hold back the rain. And for three and a half years, God held back the rain. Until finally, you know, it's time to pray. And God, he prayed again and God gave rain. It was to bring a, 
bring Israel back to God. It was to show them their sin. What does it take for America to see her sin? What does it take to wake America up? What, what's wrong with our leaders anyway? God, give us some leaders that believe the word of God. Lake Mead out there. And how many have ever been to Lake Mead? Hoover Dam. I know some of you have been to the Hoover Dam. How many has been to the Hoover Dam? That's Lake Mead right there at the Hoover Dam. It's down 100 feet. Karen said, the newsman said, I said uh, he's standing on the bed. He said, a lot of places you walk across. It's the biggest reservoir in the United States. The biggest reservoir, the biggest lake, I guess, in capacity, they said. That's what he said, anyway. The biggest lake in the United States. It's down 100 feet. The man said, where he's standing, I said, just imagine 100 feet of water above your head. Imagine what that is. When God cuts all the water off out there. You reckon that crowd's going to repent? You reckon they're going to recognize the hand of God? You reckon they're going to start praying for God to send rain? Hey, God controls the rain. Other places, he's flooding them out. He's just flooding them like crazy. And other places, he's drying them out, just like he is around here. We went up to saw the Lord on Thursday night, coming back home. We counted five times, went through these little showers, just one little shower right after another. But it wasn't much. You know, it's raining pretty hard in them little shower, but you run right out of it. Then after a while, you run into another it's five showers. That's not enough to do the job. That's not enough to do the job. It's wonderful to get a little shower, but we need rain. We need rain. We, uh, yeah, drop Mercy drops around us, but for the showers we plead. That's what the song says. For the showers we plead. Oh, God, send the showers from heaven. Oh, my, 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 in Jesus' name. Oh, when God cuts the water off, what are you going to do? Floods and droughts and jobs still going to China and to Mexico. America can expect judgment. She can expect judgment. America's on that road to destruction. I'm not going to say America's going out of existence, but I don't find American prophecy. I wonder why God left her out of prophecy. As big as, you know, we used to be the number one nation in the world, didn't we? But since it took God out of everything, it keeps going. You can't leave God out and get blessed by God. He just ain't going to do it, folks. I'm telling you, he ain't going to do it. Oh, my, 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 on the road to destruction. Righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness will exalt you. Sin will reproach you. Amen. Number three. I talked about internationally and nationally. What about personally? Which road are you on? The Bible said there's two roads you can travel. There's the narrow road. There's the narrow road. I hope you're on that narrow road today. If you're not, it's the road of repentance. It's a road of faith. It's the road of restitution. It's a road of uh, salvation. It's a road of grace. It's a road of faith. This road is not crowded. The Bible said just few find it. Hey, this road's not crowded. You're going to run into a lot of folks that don't know the Lord Jesus. That means you can be a bright light for the Lord. Let your light so shine that men can see. You can really be a light for Jesus. And you can be a witness because everywhere you go, there's people that's lost. Uh, so the Bible said there's not many that will find it. It's not an easy road. Don't think the road, uh, narrow road's easy. You ever been on a narrow road and you have past cars? I mean, they, man, you got to be careful. We went up to Boonesboro. I wouldn't. Well, Anybody ever been to Boonesboro? That's where Daniel Boone was at, Brother Lemuel has. But anyway, I married, uh, married a couple up there at Lexington, North Carolina, and Kentucky, excuse me, Lexington, Kentucky. And, uh, and so we went up to Boonesboro. And that little old road, you had to get off to pass anybody. I mean, you really had to get, you know, way off to pass anybody, just, just barely an hour uh, wide enough for one car. And that's not a good road to drive on. You know that? I like them big freeways, don't you? Where you can just put the pedal of the metal and zoom, boy, you're gone, you know. But you can't do it on them little old narrow roads. And so this is a narrow road. It's not an easy road. But it's a blessed road because it leads to life. It leads to life. It leads to life eternal. Oh, brother, this road is a great road. It's a road that leads to heaven, leads to glory, leads to the blessings of God. It's a wonderful road to be on. Thank God to be on this road. On this road to glory lands, that song says, I've been on it a pretty good while now. Anybody ever been on the road 50 years? How many has been on the road 50 years, Miss Murray? Okay, Carolyn. How many? Maybe 60 years. Anybody been on 60 years? Okay, got a few 60 years, 70 years. 
Anybody been on 70? That's a pretty good time to be on that good road, isn't it? Then the Bible talks about not only the narrow road, but the Bible says this, this broad road, this broad road, it's the crowded road. The Bible said many go in there at it's crowded. You're going to find a lot of folks going the same direction you are. They're going the same. It's the easy road. It's not the hard road. No, no opposition. That devil ain't going to fight you. That devil ain't going to kick you. That devil ain't going to argue with you. Nothing. He's, he's glad that you're on that broad road. He's going to pat you on the back and say, you're doing fine. You're, you're doing great. Hey, you're not doing great. It's the road that leads away. It's a road that leads away. It's a road that leads away uh, from God. It's a road that leads away from Christ. It's the road that leads away from the Bible. It's the road that leads away from the church. It's the road that leads away from repentance. You must repent. The Bible said, God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. God commands us to repent. Was repent mean? It means to change your mind, change your direction. You change your mind about sin. You change your mind about Jesus. You change your mind about God. You change your mind about holy things. Hey, God said we must repent. It's the road that leads away from righteousness. It's the road that leads away from salvation. It's the road that leads away from life. It's the road that leads away from heaven. It's the road that leads away from glory. One of these days, when you get to heaven, you're saved by the grace of God. What glory? Oh, the glory that you're going to experience, the glory that you're going to see when you see God the Father and God the Son sitting on that throne. You see all the angels of heaven. You see all the glory of that wonderful place. It's going to be glorious. I mean glorious. Glory. You ain't never seen nothing to compare with. There's nothing in this world to compare with that glory world. Nothing down here to compare with the glory world. It's going to be a glorious time, brother, in the by and by. But if you're on that broad road, it's the road of sinful pleasures. Oh, yes, the world's gone pleasure mad. The Bible said lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Anything you love more than you do, Jesus, that's your God. Anything between you and the Lord Jesus, that's your God. Anything, whatever you put there, is your God. It's a, it's a road of sexual a perversion, all kinds of sexual perversions today. God ordained sex in the confines of marriage. Nothing wrong with it. Marriage is beautiful and sex is beautiful in the marriage context, but out of marriage context, it's a sin before God Almighty. It's perversion to the highest degree. There is, it's a road of alcohol, it's a road of drugs, it's a road of pornography. I heard, him, I heard uh, Dr. Dobson this week, and I heard him talk to this man about pornography. Anybody hear that? Maybe you didn't. Maybe you could have heard it years ago. It was a, he, he interviewed this man, and I thought the man, first day I clicked in, I thought the man may be a Christian. And he was talking about pornography and what it does. And uh, uh, he said, you know, as young kids, they go around the dumpsters and find these magazines. And they found these pornographic magazines. He talked about hardcore and softcore. I didn't know the difference. I thought it was all hardcore. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but he said they begin, you know, he began to do some of those things. And when they came to the conclusion of the program, we found out it was the serial killer. The serial killer. That was the day, the night before his death. Just before he's put to death in the execution. He killed 28 women. 28 women. That's what pornography does. It leads down, down. It perverts men's minds. It brings them into bondage to that kind of stuff that's defiling before God. Defiles the mind, defiles the soul, defiles the body. Oh, brother, listen, that's a road of sin, the road of sex, sex perversion. Then it's the road of rejection. It's the road of unbelief. It's the road of deception. Because a man on that road, he has to be deceived by the devil. The devil's got the shades pulled down over his eyes. He can't understand. He can't see what's going on. Isn't that something? It's the road of destruction. It leads to hell. It leads to hell fire. You like fire? People like fire. Nobody likes fire. Many people die in fires. It leads to eternal punishment. It leads to eternal separation from God. I don't know about you. I don't want to be separated from God. I don't want to be separated from his Holy Spirit. I don't want to be separated from the goodness of God and the grace of God. Oh, my, you think about being separated forever and ever from the goodness of God and God's grace. God's good to you every day, isn't he? God's let you live. God has let you live. He's let you breathe. He's, he let you eat breakfast this morning. He let you put your clothes on. He let you come to church. That's God's grace. That's God's goodness. He let you breathe his good air and drink his good water. 
That's God's grace. Every day that you live, that is God's good grace and God's good mercy. Oh, how good God is. That road leads to the lake of fire. That road leads to outer darkness. The lake of fire is in outer darkness. And there the Bible said there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. And there men are separated. And there men, the worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. Dr. David Jeremiah was preaching this morning on the Antichrist, and he's talking about the Antichrist. You know, the Antichrist and the false prophet will be the first two, two people in the lake of fire. And the Bible said they're cast in alive. In other words, they don't even die. They're cast in the lake of fire, carried out there in outer darkness into the lake of fire. They're the first two there. And a thousand years later, when the devil is cast in the lake of fire, the Bible said, or the beast and the false prophet, are, they're still there. They've been there a thousand years. Hey, these people preaching, they ain't no hell and you ain't going to suffer hell. Hey, you better read the Bible again. That's what I'm saying. They've been teaching people the wrong thing. Oh, brother, let me tell you something. If you're on that broad road, that's what's going to happen. This is what the Bible said. Can I read it again? I've read this several times. Proverbs 1, the Bible says, How long, you simple ones? How long is it going to be? How long will you love simplicity? How long will you love your sin, the way you're living? How long will you love it? The scorners delight in their scorning fools hate knowledge. Don't hate the knowledge of God. Receive the knowledge of God. Open your heart. Receive the truth. The Bible said, buy the truth and sell it not. Get a hold of God's truth. When you get a hold of it, never turn it loose. Turn yet my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. In other words, repent. That's what he's saying, repent. Turn yet my reproof. Repent when God reproves you. Because I have called, because I have called, God has called. And you refused. I've stretched out my hands and no man regarded. But you said it, not all my counsel. With none of my reproofs. I also will laugh when your calamity, at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation, your destruction as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. You know, there's a time that God won't hear you pray. There's a time that God won't pay any attention to you, friend. That's a sad day. When you call, when you're in trouble and you pray, you're dying with cancer, you're dying with something else, or you're laying under an automobile and you're suffering extremely and you're wanting God to help you and you call and he won't answer you. Well, that's a sad time, isn't it? He said, I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge. They hated knowledge. They hated the knowledge of the Lord and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproofs. Therefore, shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Oh, friend, I'm telling you, are you on that road of destruction? The world at large is on that road to destruction. Our country, America, is on that road to destruction. But what about you personally? As you sit here this morning, can you say, Preacher, I'm on that narrow road. I'm saved by the grace of God. I know I'm heaven bound with a hammer down. Or would you have to say, Preacher, I'm on that broad road. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Can I see the hand of every person? You say, Preacher, I'm saved and I know it. I'm saved and I know it. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder if there's a person here. You say, Preacher, I need prayer today. 